good, everybody? We got a special video today. No one been spending my IG at Cash Nasty. But, oh, we the 500-pound monster. NBA players fear. Here's his story. Now, I have about a couple, uh, two or three people here on Twitter with this video here, man. I said, you know what? I'm about to sit here and eat my uh, early lunch for the day if I go work out. I said, why not just chill with you guys? You know what I mean? Why not eat and pay some bills at the exact same time? Why not? I like the video. This is the biggest oh, I guy. Oh, can oh, wrong, wrong headset. Yeah, I, I, I forgot. I upgraded. You know what I mean? Let's see. The world has ever seen touch a basketball. Is it even legal for this dude to be six foot ten, five hundred pounds, and play basketball? This is a man so powerful even LeBron would be afraid. Moving. Up. Nah, you, you cap right there, cuz Le LeBron would not be afraid, now, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, like, yeah, he big and all, though. You know what I mean? But I mean, a bit af afraid. That's it, bro. That's you can't just throw that word out there, bro. Cuz, nah, nah. If you guys don't know, bro, before I click the video, I'm like, I just like, see the thumbnail on this guy here channel. I'm like, what the hell is this? Then I click on y'all and I found out this is actually someone that I had actually watched when I was younger. His name is Escalade. Around the court. Like, and I hope the N1 team, right? Like Steph with handles like Iverson. To be honest, I've. Hey, hey, yeah, he needs to get down, y'all. Yeah, this is Escalade Jackson. Well, this is how I found out about the professor. You've definitely heard of his older brother, Mark Jackson, former NBA star and current NBA commentator. How is it at six foot one, Mark? Look at that this is Mark. Oh my, dude, this is crazy to find out. Well, you probably never heard of Troy. You've definitely heard of his older brother. Bro, I never knew this. Mark Jackson, former NBA star and current NBA commentator. How is it that six Did foot one that? Mark was able to make it to the league, but not Troy? And that's just the first question that popped into my head. How does someone even get to 500 pounds Fat. and then stay not just mobile, but be also incredibly athletic? How do you function in society God, being this big? this dude sit on? Troy S. Bro, he's like a created character, y'all, on the court, man. 99 ball handler. 99 ball handler. Hall of Fame brick wall. Yeah. Hall of Fame moving truck. I'll let. Kalei Jackson is one of the most fascinating people in all of sports history. And it's time we answer all of these questions and more. Troy was always a man destined for the NBA. Falling in love with basketball at around 10 years old, he practiced and played day and night at Rucker Park in Harlem. And while he was just a chunky kid having fun playing ball, his brother Mark, was well on his way to See, the NBA that when Troy was just 14 years old. Their family hit the lottery when Mark was drafted 18th in the 1987 NBA draft, completely changing Troy's life in the direction it was headed. Imagine being a 14-year-old with a brother in the NBA. How many Big Macs would you order? Because <laughs> Troy started ordering a lot. At this point, Troy was already a pretty spoiled kid, being the youngest of six siblings. But now with a brother in the NBA making millions, a lot of the motivation Troy had was gone. His family already made it, and he was practically set for life. We don't know the full story, but yeah, just typically how a black family goes, y'all. One person make it. Nigga, we made it. Hey, hey. Yeah, for real though, man. I mean, I think that one person put the generation of curse, you know, you know what I mean? But we don't know the full story, man. We, we don't know, you know, what really caused him. You know, maybe he had jealousy. Not, not even jealousy. Maybe maybe he couldn't get to that level of his brother's own. That probably what kept him eating in the, you know, into depression. We never know somebody's full story, man. You know what I mean? This guy here, I'm not saying that you're wrong, but, you know, that's it could be... It could be so many other factors involved, you know what I mean, with, with uh, people to eat, you know. So instead of focusing on getting in shape, preparing for the NBA, scouting out colleges, or even pestering his older brother for NBA advice, Troy decided he'd rather put on a show down at Rucker Park. And that's exactly what he did. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my goddess. Yeah, she the hottest. That's plain and simple. I'll bring on not your holy spirit if I bless the Bruh, temple. Bro, a hoop is... I slow it down. I don't lose 
<laughs> Throughout Troy's next four years hoopers. in high school, he wasn't focused on making it to the NBA. He was focused on showing off and really just flexing on all these kids a quarter of his size. By his senior year of high school, approximately 1,000 Big Macs later, Troy hit his peak size, standing at six foot ten and weighing well. I like the way he's talking about him, bro. If I can recall, I think he passed away, man. He keep bringing these B-Max in here, man. Man, come on, man. Put some respect on his name, man. Hold on, man. Man, this dude, man, he passed away, bro. Come on, man. Stop, bro. Stop playing with his name like that, though, man. Like, you putting these B-Max right here or something, man. Come on, bro. Put some respect on his name, man over 500 pounds we get it. although troy really had put no focus into making it to the nba his size alone had attracted scouts to come watch him play not in your typical high school <laughs> games but down at rucker park being six foot you ten guard him, bro. pounds doesn't leave you with a lot of options it's not like troy could go work in an office job in a cubicle he couldn't even walk through the door so when he was offered a full ride scholarship to wallace community college in selma alabama he felt like he had to take it what else could he do other than make it to the NBA? Proving there was more than enough room for a 500 pound player in college, Troy performed well past expectations. While he wasn't playing at the highest levels of college ball, Troy's complete disregard for the multiple defenders on him solidified a long term just spot on the roster. Just, just, Finally it's catching crazy, the eye of a Division I school after he received all region honors as a sophomore. Troy was approached with another full ride scholarship to the University of Louisville. Under the supervision of legendary coach Denny Crum, Troy's scholarship was not without its conditions, essentially stating he had to replace the Big Macs with salads. Troy was expected. How you know the Big Macs, man? What do you want to go to food, man? Why you got to be Big Macs? Expected to drop well below the 400 pound mark a weight he hadn't seen since his early high school days back at Rucker Park. This along with being placed on a team whose style of play was more structured than anything he had ever experienced before. Troy's production plummeted, no hey. longer having extra weight to put to use. He was now a big man on a roster who frankly saw him as a freak. Play Three points, cuz! Playing only 20 games over his two years. be like me, boy, but I'll be shooting at the top of the key, cuz. I'm telling bro, I had about three top of the key shots. Hey, bro, put me in the college, college y'all. I'm good for it. I'm, I'm good for at least nine points. That three points top of the key, man. You know, three shots top of the key, man. Wear like water, man. And I'm not even a hoop hoop. I'm just a hooper. You're still at Louisville. The only thing Troy gained from his experience was a bachelor's degree in communications. Depressed and down on his luck. He about to say he went back to the Big Macs. Go ahead and say it. Troy turned to the one thing he loved more than being at Rucker Park. His love for the McDonald's Big Mac. Bro, Going to you, the same are you supposed to buy Big Mac, bro? Damn! McDonald's he had gone to as a kid in Harlem. Troy was out of college, back in town, and back on his way to 500 pounds. With time on his hands, Troy quickly found himself a spot playing with the Harlem Globetrotters. Now, Troy would only play alongside them for a brief period. But he had no idea that his next big opportunity was just around the and corner. One. While yep. Troy was and busy one. dunking on some 100 pound kids down at Rucker Park, right down the street was a small sports gear company, a company known as An One. Now, at the time, An One was in its infancy, and as a company, they were looking for any way to market their sports apparel. And that's when a tape landed on their desk, showing off some local street ball highlights. The professor, y'all. Oh man, copyright music. Oh man, can't have that cool. When the potential in New York's forgotten street ball legends, and one became known across New York not for their appeal, but for their street ball tapes. Starting out as a gimmicky tape, and one mixtape volume one was given out if you bought 100 bucks of apparel. And people were quick to line up and down the street like this tape was a new Supreme drop. I had the shoes and I had DVDs. <clears throat> Yeah. And one immediately realized they had struck gold here, organizing an N1 tour that promoted the company's image, establishing rosters by season like any other former league would. And one broke into significance after scoring on ESPN in the early 2000s. 
which just so happened to be the time Troy Escalade Jackson jumped on the scene, making a crater-like impact that rose and went to national recognition. Troy's instant popularity amongst fans as the lovable giant made him a staple of the league's subsequent tours. Joining up with the team the same year as Bob Bro, look at, uh, look at the professor, Made him a staple of the That's league's the professor, subsequent bro. tools. That's so crazy, bro. Joining up with the team. That's why I used to watch the professor, man. Like, don't he mind you like a, a, a teach ass in this generation? You know what I mean? It's crazy, bro. The same year as ball handling legend and now YouTuber, the professor, Troy found an unlikely friend in the 5 foot 10, 150 pound point guard. With Troy's presence, and one quickly started expanding from New York to Miami, Philly, DC and eventually across the nation. And one success is almost exclusively owed to the 500 pound ball handling monster. Facts. And just like that, and one took the nation by Hot storm, sauce. selling out arenas. Thousands of fans and lined up my... eagerly to see just how Escalade can move up and down the court like a Ferrari. Reaching an all time peak in popularity in 2005, anyway, man. Troy had done That's the four impossible people, man. when he and the professor made the cover of Sports Illustrated. A cover that historically was reserved for only the most legendary athletes was now dominated by someone who survived strictly off of Big Macs. Crazy. As the biggest recorded Man, leave Big Macs alone, bro. Player in history to pick up a basketball, Troy was easy to spot, and he impressed all who saw him. But as the years would go on, Troy became caught up in the image he had created for himself, the lovable giant. I mean, just to put his popularity in perspective, this is a guy who was more well known playing in a discount league than actual NBA players. Troy could walk into any club in the country and get VIP treatment, literally, Duh. while guys playing for legit NBA teams would go unnoticed. His size, his ability, his personality all played a role in becoming Facts. the fan favorite he was. And everything that made him so great also led to his biggest tragedy. Despite his talent, there was no escaping the inevitable. Growing older in age, Troy's weight issues came knocking. Of all his teammates, it would be the professor that had noticed Troy's weight was no longer helping him in the same way it used to. Instead, it was now slowing him down. Worried about how Troy's weight was affecting his performance and ability to play throughout the season, the professor tried nudging Troy into a healthier lifestyle. Failing to keep the weight off that he would lose during the summer, the professor went to his brother Mark for help. Having always known Troy as the biggest kid in town, Mark wasn't surprised. Agreeing that Escalade was just always going to be Escalade, the two decided to just accept the fact that Troy just wasn't interested in losing weight. And how could he be? That's how some people, it, bro, like, I, that's how it is, bro. It's just like when I feel like I'll be pushing people like to fitness and everything like that, man. Some people just don't want it, bro. You know what I mean? Like, just because I'm doing it doesn't, like, that's just like me making my own religion in a way. You know what I mean? I'm gonna sit here and push my beliefs on you. Why, why, why you should do this right here? Why you should do this right here? No, I can't suggest. But pushing on somebody, y'all, that's that's worse than you know. Other people hate, hate on religions. You know what I mean? I'm creating my own religion. You know, so you're thinking about that perspective right there, man. Some people just don't just don't want to, bro. Some people content. Some people just happy where they at, man. Some people, some people don't don't want to be uncomfortable. Some people don't like the thrill of being uncomfortable and things like this right here. Some people want to be comfortable, bro. You know. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Everybody's success is measured differently, bro. You know? Troy's entire success story gravitated around the fact he was such a great baller at his weight, doing things no one thought possible, placed in a position to double down and continue his career at his weight, or listen to his body at the risk of losing it all. Troy made the decision many of us would. After years of abuse, his body had finally reached a breaking point. In 2011, while in the middle of promoting an upcoming street ball tour, Troy unexpectedly died in his sleep at the age of 38. Having Dang. just passed his physical to play with the ball up tour, Troy's death came as a huge surprise to everyone but himself. Diagnosed with hypertensive heart disease, Troy's inability to lose the weight when he needed to had come full circle. And just like that, the sports world lost one of its most fascinating characters. Redefining what it meant to be a sports entertainer, Troy's impact on basketball is one that will never be forgotten. He was clearly a man with the connections, skill, drive, and talent to make it to the NBA and beyond. But at the end of the day, Troy followed what he truly loved until the day he died, being the lovable giant that really just wanted to entertain. Respect. What other way did he go out? He knew, he knew his calling. 
he 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 knew what what got him there and what made him happy. Yeah, you know it's his decision, bro. You know, yeah, we could have had him longer, but that's your time, dog. Like, I respect it, man. You know, that's how you want to go out, bro. You know, that's how I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna go out saying, "Yo!" My tombstone, you know, you guys gonna put, he paid them bills. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, man. I'll just side, bro. I had so much respect. Have so much disrespect for uh, Troy Escalade, bro. Grew up watching him, bro. Uh, I know Flight did too, man, because Flight's a big fan of, of uh, Hot Sauce. He played, you know, Hot Sizzle. Back then, uh, you know, just us growing up, and um, anyone was so big. I even had the shoes and everything, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, man. You got one some more. Make sure you guys hit me on IG at Cash Nasty and on Twitter at Cash Nasty. Hit me a follow over there, man. Send me some videos. We out of here. Everybody!